welcome back to another video here in the off grid garage all right battery building part number two so we have disconnected all our balanced well balanced battery cells now put them here on the floor as they were on the on the bench and now we put them here into this battery box and connect this all up with our bms and other components which i would like to show you before we do anything with the batteries all right there we go uh, this is all not fixed yet apart from the fuse here and the switch so the switch looks like this from the outside and this will be the only button or access to the battery from the outside and some people have asked so this is the blue c systems the m series battery switch it's a single circuit on off and if we just read the specs quickly so 900 amps cranking three uh, 30 seconds 500 amps intermittent for five minutes and 300 amps continuous 48 volt dc maximum so this is usually used on boats to start engines and stuff like this well this is now my battery switch here for the whole system all right, I've put this uh, on the outside now here. And, uh, this is all secured with these four screws here. And it looks from the inside like this. So we've got only an input and an output of this switch. This is M10 studs. So very sturdy, very high quality switch. It's about $43 Australian or something, including shipping. Link is down below. And we've got our ANL fuse here, which will be our positive terminal and some people have commented that i cannot use this anl fuse here for my battery because this will maintain an arc between these two contacts here if we have a fault and this little piece in the middle melts there will be an arc and could potentially start a fire and i need to use a class t series fuse the one with a fine sand inside you know but I think this one is totally fine and appropriate for fusing the battery. This is a 100 amp fuse inside. And if we have a fault with the battery, this little piece inside will melt and we will have an arc between these two contacts, of course. But it will not stay there for long because the material left and right this material will actually melt away very quickly and increase the gap in between these contacts and 48 volt is not enough voltage to maintain this arc for very long so i would not expect to having an arc there for longer than one second see i've got this arc electric welder here as well and this has a welding idling voltage of 48 volts so this is very comparable to our battery then and the short circuit current is 120 amps and the current range is from 40 to 80 amps so this is all if you have ever used such an electric welder you know how hard it is to get actually the spark flowing and once it is flowing you have to maintain the right distance between your electrode and the metal material you want to weld if you go too far away the arc will just disappear and the welding stops and exactly this will happen with this anl fuse the material here in between these two contacts will melt and then we've got an arc but the material will keep melting away unless like in a welder you would push one of the contacts closer to the other one to maintain this arc but the the actual material will disappear so that's why i think these fuses are totally appropriate for our battery usage what we are doing with our solar systems here Anyway, moving on from this. So, okay, what, what do we have here? We've got our BMS, of course, here on this side. We've got the balance wiring going through this hole. We've got the B minus contact. So this is our most negative contact, which goes to the battery eventually. And this cable here connects to the charger and also to the inverter. So this is the cable here. And so this will be our negative cable. And then the positive cable will come down from the battery into the fuse and will go out from the fuse here through a hole and comes through here and then in our electric switchboard over there. So we've got negative and the positive sorted, right? No big deal. 
Okay, now we've got this switch in between here and as you said in many of your comments, it does not matter if the switch is in the positive or negative side, it doesn't really matter. So, I just want to show you something here. Look at this, how perfect this fits. Hey, Coming from the battery into our BMS, coming out of the BMS, important loop, and going back into our switch. And from here we've got the negative coming out here in a bow, through the hole, negative, positive, done. These are the two cables sticking out, we are done. Feature complete, right? Well, yes, yes and no. We still got the Victron Smart Shunt here, which I would like to put in the case as well. And I've read all your comments and really thank you so much for, for all your advice and, and sharing your experience with these devices. And someone actually mentioned that he's got both, he's got a BMS and the Smart Shunt. And he actually figured that the information the BMS shows is not as accurate as the one from the Smart Shunt. So, and he's absolutely right. I didn't think about this, of course, because the BMS will not be as accurate as the Victron Energy Smart Shunt. All right, so we have to put this one in as well. The question is where and why? And you have left so many comments under this video as well when I asked for the right order of all these components to connect to the battery. And 99% I would say of your comments were you have to go from the battery into the BMS and then in the smart shunt and then the rest of your installation. And I probably agree 99.99% with it because as, as many of you said the BMS should be part of the battery. If you buy these ready to use lithium batteries these days with 100, 200 ampere hours, they come ready designed inside the box with the prismatic cells and the BMS already cabled in the box. Everything is set up with a balancing leads. This is all done for you, ready to use. And you said totally correctly that the BMS should be part of the battery, as in these batteries. This is one unit. The BMS belongs to the battery, so it should be as close to the battery as possible. And I agree, I agree. I don't disagree with you. But I want to show you something else. Uh, by the way, I called my first batch of battery cells delivered by airplane Hindenburg. These were the first four battery cells delivered from China. And this is in relation to, you know what happened with the Hindenburg 100 years ago or something. It was full of hydrogen and it exploded, of course. So, and in relation to the short I did, <laughs> I told you in the other video, you can see the mark still there on the actual terminal. This were, these were two cells of the Hindenburg delivery. So cell number two and cell number three had this short because I put a bus bar exactly in these positions here and they were not in parallel, they were in series. So I had a short between these two cells. Luckily the bus bars were not screwed on, just loose on it and I had only these little burn marks here on the electrodes now. But hence the name Hindenburg. I think that's a totally appropriate naming for a battery cell, right? I think one of you guys suggested actually to call them Hindenburg. So thanks for all your great comments and suggestions over there. Okay, and this is pretty much as you would cable it correctly, right? right? So you've got the BMS here and you connect the battery minus cable to the battery most negative terminal. And you've got the C for charger cable going to battery minus of your smart shunt and from there you're going to your charger and inverter. This is how you want me to wire this up and I totally agree because these two belong together. Well, without going into too much detail with the Victron smart shunt here, this one has two more contacts here. One of them is the VBAT plus. So this is the voltage sense for the battery and you poke in this cable which comes with the smart shunt and on the other side is a ring terminal and this one goes to your battery most positive terminal. So the smart shunt measures the voltage between the battery minus and the battery plus directly with these cables. And then it transmits these information to the Victron to the Victron charge controller so they measure the correct voltage of the battery and don't use the terminal voltage because you've got cable losses here as well and this voltage is not accurate what your battery is. Hence the setup with the smart shunt measures the voltage directly at the battery 
and transmits this via Bluetooth to all the controllers. So now because we've got the BMS in between the battery and the smart shunt, there will be a little bit of loss inside the BMS here. This is a BMS with a solid state relay in it. It doesn't have any MOSFET transistors as other BMSs have and I'm expecting the solid state relay has very very low resistance and I don't think we've got much loss from the negative terminal of the battery through the BMS into the smart shunt but still it doesn't measure the exact voltage at the battery terminal there is still some kind of loss between the contacts in here and the cables to the negative terminal of the battery. Okay, and now I have just modified our setup here and have put the smart shunt in as the first device and the battery management system, the BMS, as the second device. Okay, let's quickly talk about this situation now. So the smart shunt will measure the voltage directly at the battery's now negative terminal and with this cable the positive terminal of the battery and gets the correct information and transmits them to the solar charge controllers for charging purposes of course we don't use this cable right this is just illustration purposes come on so the bms would be connected through the smart shunt to the negative terminal of your battery and we have a certain voltage drop here of 50 millivolt i guess this is at 500 amps so at 100 amps i expect we have only about 10 millivolt of voltage drop in between these contacts here. So the BMS will measure 10 millivolt to less, right? Well, not quite because this one doesn't measure the voltage. This is only to transfer the amps. That's why it is a thick cable from the negative terminal of the battery into the system. And I think only two people have actually mentioned this in the comments. Um, Let's have a look at these balance leads very quickly. So we are just focusing on the first two. One is the black one, this is the negative one. And the first white one is the voltage sense which goes to your first battery positive terminal to determine the voltage of your first battery. And exactly what I just said, this is your voltage sense of your battery. It doesn't use the thick cable for voltage sensing, it uses this thin black one and they are not connected together you can measure this with an ohm meter they are not connected together internally they are separate if the if this thin cable would be connected to the same terminal as the thick one there would be parts of the load going through this thin cable as well and this is definitely not the case there's no current flowing through this one here apart from the balancing current but the main current is going through this cable. This is just voltage sense. So, and now you can see, we have got two of these two cables here. One goes to the negative terminal of your battery and the other one is the first positive. So it measures directly at the battery with these two cables and does not, and does not care what voltage drop we have in this cable here. So from a pure measurement perspective, this would work better because we are measuring accurate voltage with the shunt and we are measuring accurate voltage with the BMS. But if you have it the other way around, the shunt always has to overcome the losses inside the BMS and does not measure the correct voltage. So, and even I agree with you to 99.99% that we should start with the BMS and then put the shunt and then the switch and then the inverter and the charge controller. I'm really thinking of cabling it like this. So going from the battery into the shunt first and from there into the BMS. So I will combine these, all these three devices here into one. And this is the purpose of this box basically. Yeah, you have got all equipment belonging to the battery in one box. Okay, so this is my thinking about this whole situation with the BMS and the smart shunt. So please let me know in the comments down below why I should not do it like this. What is the downside of cabling the battery to the smart shunt and to the BMS? Well, I'm waiting for your comments and feedback in regards to that before I start cabling this battery. But while you are typing your comment, I'll show you something else. Okay, here we have situation number one. 
So negative terminal comes from the battery going into the BMS, coming out, going to the switch, and this one provides our negative terminal to the inverter and charger. And the fuse supplies our positive terminal from the battery to our charge controller and inverter. So there's no smart shunt. This would be a very elegant cabling and I would need only a small piece of cable from here to the positive terminal of the battery and I'm done. Okay, here's situation number two. We've got the smart shunt included now. And okay, this will not, well, the cable, the cable will go like this then. Okay, similar situation. This is our battery negative going into the BMS. BMS output goes to the two battery minus of the smart shunt. And then I need a connection from here, just in a loop to this con contact here of the switch. And this will be again our negative output and our positive stays as it is through the fuse. This would include the smart shunt after the BMS. And now the third possibility. And this is our third possibility. We are using the smart shunt first, coming from the negative terminal up here, going into two battery minus, and from here into our BMS battery minus, and then from the output BMS into our switch, negative terminal, and the positive stays connected through the fuse. So positive terminal to the battery, negative terminal to the battery. So it's a very clean installation as well, right? And I don't need to build any small connection loops or something. This is already done by the cabling which comes with the BMS. So this would be the third possibility. And just before you ask, the actual switch here comes with a shroud with a cover. So this is totally isolated now as well. Nothing to fear about. The only open contacts are the ones from the actual shunt here. Well, but then on the other hand, we just put the lid on like this and this is all done. So this will be the whole battery box just with an on off switch and the positive and negative cable coming out here somewhere. And that's basically it. So, and now depending if I've got my negative contact here, or if I use this one as my negative contact through the gap to the battery directly, I need to arrange these batteries accordingly to have my positive, to have my most positive and negative contact in these areas to keep the cables as short as possible. So guys, I'm waiting for your feedback. What do you think is the best? So number one, no shunt at all. Number two, BMS first, shunt second. Number three, like this one, shunt first, BMS second, because of the voltage sense cables we have at the BMS. This is actually the most accurate solution we can have. So I'm tending to use this once. Even I fully agree with you to 99.99%, I would build it after the 0.01% and use the shunt first and then the BMS. Okay, all your comments down below, guys. I'm waiting for you. Uh, until then, I cannot really build the battery further. I need your feedback. I need your feedback first if any of these configuration is really bad and why. It looks like I'm really relying on you now with building this battery. So please hurry up with your feedback and we shall see us again very, very soon with the next update on this battery build. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.